That root hacking out only took about a half an hour. I was working mostly in the shade. That went quite well. That is a project that has been festering in me for, well, since I began, since I made the trail. Back about a year ago, no, think Chris. I made it three summers ago, right about now. I discovered Otter Pond a week or so earlier and decided, oh yes, I need to be able to get down there. A trail is in order. But those roots and the trip stubs frequently tripped me. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. I'm sure you can. If you can hear my, well, a lavalier microphone is only sensitive to the very near surroundings, so. The little offshoot pond down here is now dry. No water visible at all. The mud is wet, but... And downward we go into droughtier and droughtier. There was a cool storm we had pop up this morning. Began to hear the thunder and went and looked out. Oh, yeah, well, it was moving. It was west of us and moving northeast. So once again, we were not the beneficiary of that rain. It was raining like hell to the north of us. It's been a real good news, bad news situation emotionally for me for having Suki go through what she did yesterday. I had forgotten what a horrible, horrible emptying emotional trauma that is to be losing a dog your cohort I know that's not the right word but I've always thought it was so I'm going to keep using it so the the good news is obviously the reprieve I've had but it's just putting off for the future what I'm going to have to go through again for real for serious forever She's laying five feet away from me in the shade here. She's pretty much back to normal. We did have a morning nap as usual and I did pick her up. I don't even want her to attempt jumping up on the bed. I don't know if she would have tried it or not. Her stubbornness may have insisted that she do try it, but I don't think she would have made it. She gets up on the low seat, all right, but she has to get her front paws up there and then it's a redhead duck. Yes, I know. They're not happy about having me here. How do I know it's a redhead? I don't know. Well, I know a mallard. Big bird just was flying over. Huge. I think it was bigger than an eagle. I think it was a turkey vulture. There it is again. It doesn't have the white head, though. That's why I think, oh, there's two of them. It's either an immature bald eagle. He's not acting immature. Or a turkey vulture, which we have, I think, around here. I know we did in Wisconsin. Yeah, we have them here. So, getting up on the love seat, she gets her front paws up and then gives it a little leap from her back legs and gets up there with no trouble. Oh, I'm so overjoyed to have her back. Like here, she walked down here with me. She was behind me, she didn't, didn't run ahead, but she's just a little over 24 hours of being out of that trauma, so I'm giving her a break. See, she's got a little hump on her. 
muzzle. <laughs> Either a deer fly or horse fly bite. Oh my gosh. I had to go back in the house and get water with a lot of fresh limes s squeezed into it. <laughs> Winter's a long time when I don't get to have this. And it, it's not nearly the same unless you're sweating and have been working. Mm. I woke up this morning. <laughs> I'm looking off <laughs> like I'm having to comprehend. Yes, did I actually wake up this morning or not? No. I did wake up this morning in the half light and I, w I was... Why can't I think and talk? I awoke slowly hearing, which finally dawned on me, a single bird chirping in the, in the lightning dawn. And it was I, one I'd been waiting to hear, disappointed all last summer I didn't hear it. It's either a hermit thrush or a wood thrush. Absolutely the most melodious, liquid bird call there is. And when I finally realized what it was, and it was the only bird singing, so it was a solo. You could hear it just beautifully. I got out of bed carefully to make no noise, and I tiptoed to get dressed, get the camera, The back door was open. I went out on the deck very carefully and quietly. It had s stopped, and it did not sing again. Oh, God. It was a sitting duck for recording. It was plenty loud. I had the windows shut in the bedroom, and I could hear it clearly, so it was very close in the yard. Damn. Oh, baby duck. Two of them. Oh my goodness, three of them. Four of them, there's that mom. No, those are all babies. It was the mom that was hollering at me that landed here first just a few minutes ago. I wonder what they're doing. Because I don't see the mom. Are they waiting for mom to show up again? Or has she told them, you get out there and be assertive? The mom is off to the right, around that point. I tell you, I have more action out here today than just a moment ago. I heard a huge crack. Oh man, what's that, a big beaver? It's off behind me. And I, uh, I waited a few seconds. Crash. Tree fell over. Well, I've been complaining that there hasn't been enough action down here anymore since May. So far now I've had a frog, five ducks, four little ones and their mom, a lot of dragonflies, rose-breasted grosbeak beak flew over. We were listening to the song in the tree when he first got here. Now we have to see the beaver, hopefully. And the two turkey vultures or immature bald eagles. I forgot, left those off the list. <clears throat> I have been totally sold on these, um, on treating my clothing with permethrin. I had a good example of it yesterday. I walked Suzuki down the driveway a few yards and walked into the, the woods along the path 
I stopped and waited. She followed me and went back out to the driveway and back into the house. And I was sitting half an hour later, began to feel an itch on my calf. I was not wearing my treated clothing, had not been. Went and looked up, oh, there's a tick. He had just barely begun to bite. I haven't had a tick on me all summer when I've been wearing my permethrin clothing with the socks, the pants legs tucked into the socks. Really works. I didn't have much success any other year with it, but I wasn't tucking my pant legs into the socks. Wow, it, I'm sold. And it lasts so long, six weeks, and you can wash them. I wish I hadn't had this thought. I really wish I hadn't had this thought. There's a very large popple tree about 30 feet away. I remember seeing it last summer and thinking, oh, that's kind of risky. It's healthy, but that doesn't mean anything. Popples can break off high up and, oh, shit. It's not fair. It's not fair. I'm not going to be able to sit here. It's just as bad as my my woods splitting area with the dying birch tree right over it. I just opened the door to go outside. Where did this all come from? It wasn't here an hour ago. Well, that is really fun work. Clearing the low brush so I can see off into the woods. That is so rewarding, satisfying work. The last week or more, the monarchs have been around for a month at least. And I've been wondering, is there just one monarch? Am I only seeing the same one or is there more than one? There is two at least because just now I saw them flying around and I see them all the time when I'm out here like right now there's one flying out into the woods what a joy what a joy to have monarchs last summer there was only one that I could detect now I know there's at least two and they're always here this is like they've adopted this as their homeland for some summer. I love this. Next thing I gotta do, well, along the ATV trail that goes down and around back, I wanna get, there's one right there. What friendly folk. I just realized <clears throat> that monarchs eat milkweed. I don't have milkweed here. What are they eating? 
Dennis had milkweed, a lot of it, over by his field. I haven't seen milkweed there at all this year. So obviously monarchs eat something other than milkweed. Maybe they need milkweed to reproduce. God, there are three monarchs. There's two down over there, and I saw another one off over in there. Oh my god, this is wonderful. She just got off the love seat from watching me as I'm changing out of my work clothes into my regular clothes. <laughs> when I heard her hit the floor, I looked up. <laughs> 5.28 it was at that time. You think she knows how to, to tell time? <laughs> I am feeling very clever. The audio I recorded yesterday or the day before using the lavalier mic. I knew it was too loud, but the audio adjusting is buried in the menu, but it's rather a tedious chore to get to it. I assigned the audio adjustment function to one of the buttons on the display screen and there it was. And you can just tink, 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 lower the, the volume, set it, and <laughs> here we are. We're at Outer Pond. Suki's right between my feet. I'm taking the chance that the big popple tree over here isn't going to fall down on us. It's been another windy day, but not the epic 40 mile per hour winds that I wouldn't be down here if we had that kind of wind. It's absolutely a prime, perfect summer day. Gorgeous, gorgeous. This is what we all dream about and pine for. For th four months, I was going to say three to four, but no, it's more four to five. <laughs> All winter long, we just dream about it. We see photos of it or video of it. You know, I don't like watching this video in the middle of end of January. What? Can it really be that green? Now tomorrow, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to have another day like this. Tomorrow, I'm going to move all of the slashings down to the the burn pile. I think I'm going to have to put all of that in its own, you know, make a new pile. And I really am over, overjoyed by the monarch butterflies. This is just any time I walk out of the house, any time of day, they're there. I'm watching a baby duck. I don't see any of the other three. I'm not so sure that is one of the, yeah, that's one of the babies. It's about the right size. It's about half grown. But where are the other three? That's a scary thing. And where's Mama? Where was Mama yesterday? Or the yes, day before when I was down here? Where is Mama? That's very unusual to have a baby duck. Adolescent the duck all by itself. Well, this is the natural world. I learned many years ago, I learned a lesson about leaving nature alone. Let nature run its course. They have a natural cycle and there is death everywhere. That's what animals are for, it's a food source. They're in the food chain for other animals. So I was a kid, maybe seven, eight years old. Grandma had a cabin on the lake, Little Rock Lake, and this was in the, was the late 50s. She came upon a duck egg that had 
partially cracked open and there's no mama in sight so she took it home and incubated it and it hatched. What do baby ducks do? The first person or living being they see is mama. So grandma became mama to a baby duckling and she named it Peeper. You have to take care of this baby duck now. You gotta make a cardboard box for its home and you gotta make a nest, you gotta feed it, you gotta... And she did. And I have a vivid mind's eye picture of grandma walking out in the yard at the cottage. Here comes the baby duck. It knows I'm here. I don't remember much more about the duck situation with Grandma. She obviously had to bring it in down home in Minneapolis. Kept it where? I don't remember much more about it other than Peeper came to a bad ending. It was killed there again, I don't remember how, but the lesson my dad came to, he was a real naturalist, and he believed in the natural world being left alone. And the moral for him was, next time you come across a cracked duck egg and no mom's around, leave it. Leave it alone. It's being handled by nature's way, and it would have ended up uh, maybe died. It was, certainly if it had hatched it wouldn't have survived not having a mama around. So maybe mama was around. Maybe she was just off, was going to be back. And when, you, when she did come back she was bereft that her baby was gone. There's a monarch followed us down here. Leave the egg be is the moral. I, I kind of thought that way about the baby bear that came through end of December and feeling so bad for it. And then the other side of me said, it's the natural world. But the argument with that was, is maybe the mom is not around because she got hit by a car out on the highway. Well, that's not the natural world. So there are times where we can and should intervene, question mark. The whole point about life is he who dies with the most unanswered questions wins. That's right. That's right. Don't question me on that.